New shooter coverage of NAB 2023 is sponsored by B&H and Atomos. I'm Eric Nasa with NewShooter.com and we are at NAB 2023 and I'm at the Adobe booth with Francis. How are you doing, Francis? Wonderful. We're happy to be back. Man, you guys got some cool stuff going on with Premiere Pro. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the, the, the new feature. We have two new features. Let's, let's touch on the first one. Yeah, so text-based editing, it's an entirely new way to edit. You can transcribe your footage using artificial intelligence. We support up to 17 languages. And then once you have that transcript, you can do all sorts of really great editing with it. So you can find your sound bites, you can search by words or phrases, and then you can just highlight that text, just like this is highlighted behind me right now. And you can use common keyboard shortcuts to edit those into your sequence. So probably you're familiar with the comma keyboard shortcut for doing an insert edit. Yes. It's the same here, so you're already gonna know how it works. And then once you get those sound bites into your sequence and you have a rough cut starting to take shape, you can use the transcript to make timeline edits as well. So you can do things like cut, copy, paste. You can find pauses and delete them. It'll do a ripple delete. Uh, we really think that this is going to change the way people edit in Premiere Pro. It's going to be great for seasoned professionals who you know, are working with dialogue day in and day out. But we also think it's going to be great for the non-editors. You could think of like a director or a producer uh, who traditionally do paper cuts. You could sit them down at Premiere and so long as they can find a block of text and highlight it and hit the comma key, they're going to be cool. This is a real time saver. I mean, it's all, you know, every second, every minute that you could save in the edit. And plus a long format, documentary folks are going to really get a lot of benefits from this. Oh boy, it really is. You know, I was an editor before coming to Adobe for about 10 years, and I did a lot of dialogue editing. And this is one of those things where, God, I wish I had it back then, right? Yeah. It would have saved me so much time. Because normally it goes like this. You conduct the interview, you get the footage back, and then you send it out for transcription. Best case scenario, turn around in a few hours. Worst case, it's a couple of days. And it costs you money. And then the producer or director sits down and marks up that piece of paper with a highlighter, gives it to the editor. It's a mess, right? It's a mess, yeah. So this is going to streamline that whole thing. AI is just, uh, you know, it's almost like every day we hear it, we're almost over, oversaturated with the technology, but when you're seeing like what it's really doing, it's not just not just about manipulating a video or making a, you know, something out of a picture look like something out of, out of the future. It's This is the kind of AI technology that's really going to help people get the job done faster. And we're going to see more of this type of stuff coming in the future, right? Absolutely. You know, here at Adobe, we believe that AI can automate the mundane so that you can have more time to be creative. So we're not looking to replace creative intent of you know the actual editor, but this is going to help you get your job done faster. Fantastic, but wait, there's more. <laughs> there <laughs> is more, yeah. So we have automatic tone mapping and log color detection. So these are some pretty nerdy color features, but the upshot is when you have them both turned on, it means that you can just throw footage into your timeline and not have to worry about color management. So tone mapping compresses HDR into a standard dynamic range uh, sequence. So a common use case for this would be iPhone footage. You know, the iPhone shoots HDR and you get that on your timeline, it looks all blown out and you're like, what the heck, <laughs> right? right? So tone mapping is going to take care of that for you. With log color management, mm. this works on Sony S-Log, Panasonic V-Log, and Canon C-Log. And you know, we've been shooting with log for decades, for sure. right? It comes in looking flat, and then the traditional workflow is that you apply a LUT, a lot. right? <laughs> Everyone knows this, but right. there's some problems with LUTs. They have precision errors, they could introduce banding or clipping. Yes. And what we're doing is a mathematical transformation from the camera space into the timeline space, and those problems are not there. Huh. It also means that since you don't have to use a LUT, you don't have to worry about which exact LUT you're supposed to use. You know, was it Sony S Log 2? Was it Sony S Log 3? Cine gamut. You know, the problem yes. is uh, is is real. It's a real problem. I shoot a lot of log when they, so when it's appropriate, when high contrast. Yeah. But uh, and and you're right. Like you can't take it off the shelf LUT and just throw it on there. I've seen that banding and the color goes whack. You know, so that this is going to be a real time saver for editors as well. And 
post-production colorist. It most definitely is. You awesome. want to see some demos? Yeah, let's check it out. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> so here we are, we're in a blank project, and I'm going to go into the import mode and get some footage. What you'll notice that's different over here on the right-hand side is we've got a new transcription. So we can automatically detect up to 17 languages, and we can separate the speakers so you know who's talking when, and you can set it up so that you can automatically transcribe everything that gets imported into the project. So I'm gonna import these, and first of all, I'm just gonna open up one of the clips, and what we'll see down here is that it's transcribing. This is happening on device, it doesn't need a cloud connection, and it's pretty fast and accurate. So it's about 10x real time, give or take, depending on your computer. It could be much faster than that if you have a beefy computer. Uh, and it's like upper 90s accuracy. So this will be done here in just a second. And so no smoke and mirrors, I really did transcribe it. And so the first thing I'm gonna do here is label my speakers. So the first one was the filmmaker who's asking the questions, and then this fellow on screen here is Jason. Uh, he's the executive director of the Sundance Film Festival. So now we can see that we've got the transcript, and if I just you know, drop the playhead somewhere, it's gonna move it to that point in time in the source monitor, I and I can hit playback. Part of my role at the Sundance is really what is the story of so you can see how it follows along. Yeah. And what I can do here is I can search for stuff. So this is an interview, right? I want to in start the interview with uh, him introducing himself. What's your name? So we're going to start with I'm Jason Nichols, the creative director of the Sundance Film Festival. And I can insert that by hitting this button right here. Or you'll notice that the keyboard shortcut is comma which is the standard keyboard shortcut for doing an insert edit. So I'm gonna just get comma, that inserts it into my timeline. And then now I can search for other things. So we wanna know, you know, Jason, what is your role, right? And so right here, I think at the heart uh, of it, my role at the Sundance Institute really is. And so you can see here how I'm starting to uh, build my sequence. So I'm going to go and grab another guy here, and let me just change the label color on this so it's really easy to tell them. So again, I'm going to label my speakers, and the filmmaker asking the questions, this guy's name is Michael. Um, he's the head of the video department uh, at the Sundance Film Festival. So we want to know, first of all, let's get him introducing himself. And just like any good interview, you can see that he attempts to introduce himself several times and doesn't do such a good job. Uh, but finally, he actually nails it on this attempt. So I'm going to mark that again. Notice the in and out points in the source monitor, comma to insert it. And then we want to hear from Michael, since he's the head of the video team. Well, what does your team do, Michael? So I am going to search for team. And he talks about team quite a bit, but it's really down here at the very end where he actually answers the question really, really well. So our team is responsible for making a wide variety of content. And I'm just gonna go ahead and grab like all of this. So now that I switch over to the uh, timeline, what we can see is that the transcript is now inspecting the timeline. And I can actually use the transcript to perform editing. So let's say for whatever reason, I decided that I wanted Michael to go first in this interview. I can select the text in the transcript, hit Command X for cut, move the playhead up here, Command V for paste, and it rearranged those. Wow. And of course, you can do all sorts of things like, you know, we really don't need all of this. I can just hit delete, it performed a ripple delete, and we'll notice all these uh, pauses, these little three dots indicate that there's some kind of pause where uh, they weren't talking so much. So I can find the pauses and just hit delete, and uh, brains are exploding in the audience here, I can tell it. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. And um, yeah, so this is a really great way to edit, and then there is a cherry on top, there is one more thing, and that is that once you're done, you can create captions. So create captions, it's going to use the same transcript, and then boom, there we have it. 
uh, you just edited the piece as quick as that. So if you can cut, copy, and paste, you can edit video in Premiere Pro. That's impressive. I mean, that was really fast. That's a yeah. whole other way of editing, it, and it's it, fast. It's an entirely new way of editing. Awesome. Yeah. So now we're going to move on to some really in-depth color features. Uh, but the idea is to make it easy for editors. So the first one is automatic tone mapping. And this is a problem that we have to solve right here. This is iPhone footage, and you can see how the windows are getting completely blown out. And this is something a lot of people have noticed when they bring in iPhone footage. So now we've got this option right here in the sequence settings, auto tone map media. And this is on by default. I wanted to have it off at the beginning so you can see what it used to look like. Pay attention to the windows back there uh, when I hit OK. And hit OK. So it's going to bring it into range. And this is squishing that HDR into a standard dynamic range, a Rec. 709 timeline. Um, but there's more. It also works with you know standard HDR footage. This is HDR from a Mavic Air 2S drone. The next thing regarding color is automatic tone mapping. So here is uh, some log, and this is Sony log. And so what I want to do, yeah, you know, like the traditional workflow would be to use a LUT, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is set this option right here for auto detect log video color space. And then it's just going to automatically do a mathematical conversion from the camera color space into the timeline color space. And this way, you don't have to know what the space is. You just need to know uh, to set that on. And so this works with Panasonic V-Log, Sony S-Log and Canon C-Log. So you don't have to use every clip. You can have all these multiple cameras shooting in log. You just turn that function on and it just starts doing its magic. That's exactly right. Dang, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, because coloring every clip, you got three or four different cameras shooting log. That's a, that's a mess. Yeah, and every picture profile is different. So uh, this is a really nice feature that's going to help people just get to editing faster and not have to worry about the color science. Very exciting stuff, Francis. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thanks for dropping by. You bet.